obviously I've, I've expressed my opinion that I think it's vitally important, but I don't think it's entirely impossible to go at it alone initially. However, you do want to build those areas of expertise. There's, there's just simply no way that you can be amazing in everything. And I think that's, that's really, you want to give yourself the greatest chance of success and finding people who are amazing at things that you aren't amazing at. You know, you can be good at a lot of things, but you can't be amazing at everything. And Sonia, you have a co-founder as well, am I correct, Brendan? Yes, I do. And Brendan. was that important for you at the beginning? Um, I think it wouldn't have happened without the existing human relationship, and it was the dynamic that we had as people that created the opportunity to build the business. Um, so yeah, I can't, it, it's impossible for me to imagine doing it on my own and actually pretty much every day, I, I think it would be impossible. <laughs> <laughs> and do you, but I, mean, I presume trust is a hugely important thing if you're going to put your lot in, because let's face it, you work morning, noon, night, night at the beginning when you're starting a company. Two things, trust and respect. And actually, if you don't have both of those things, you've got nothing. Um, because if you don't have them, you're constantly looking over your shoulder and second guessing and questioning yourself. And so when we started working together um, on the TV show originally, um, we were in a situation where we could have been in competition with, with each other as co-presenters, um, but very, very quickly, uh, we developed a relationship built on, on trust and respect, and we shared the skill sets with each other to try and make each other better, and, and from then it was just kind of, that's it, we trust and respect each other. And finally, the two brave women in the middle, Grania and Leonora, you both set out on your own, am I correct? Yeah, um, uh, definitely a, a tough road, I think, to, to, to be um, a sole founder. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I, I think I'm done with um, sole founder days now. So I'm like three, we launched in uh, December 2012 and I'm still the, you know, I, I suppose founder of the business, but I'm at the point now where we've grown the team to eight, people and when you are a sole founder you find yourself as the point of contact for everyone you know in terms of line man management in the early stages so you you know you very quickly can can run yourself ragged i mean that you can only operate on at that level for for so long so i'm definitely but i have a fantastic cfo who's been um, alongside me every step of the way for the last year. And um, we trust each other. I, I trust Johnny with my life at this point, you know, and we, we just really like each other as, as, as people as well. And as Judy mentioned that, you know, it's great to, I mean, it is, it is hard to find people that are excited about your business and, you know, are, are driven and motivated by the same, um, and, and have the same values. But I think once you find that, it's very important. Um, to be able to scale a business internationally, you certainly need the support. So I'm looking for co-founders now. <laughs> if anyone you all heard it here first? <laughs> yeah. um, Gronje, yourself, how quickly did you feel you needed to surround yourself with other people, even if you started out principally yourself? Well, I, I kind of always laugh at this. I, I always think it's like getting into a marriage. If I, I wasn't, I'm one of the, likely in I think, non-engineers, I think only 3% of female technologies are uh, entrepreneurs or um, engineers. If I'd known the right person in the beginning, I was actually looking for a co-founder. I desperately wanted one because it, I knew it was a lonely, you know, lonely way ahead. Um, but I didn't know what I was looking for because if you're not an engineer, you're not sure what an engineer, a good engineer looks like. So it was either wait till someone comes along who you know is a good engineer or just start and see what happens. And I just said, look, I'm just going to start and see what happens. And I'm really glad I did. Now I have a great team where, you know, 80% of us are engineers. There's 10 of us. There's three in San Francisco and seven here. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I would say to people is don't, it, it's, it held me back for a long time going, I don't have a co-founder who's an engineer. I can't do it. And just, just do it. You know, there's a book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And I would say to anyone, don't let things hold you back. Five years ago, if you had said to me that I was going to be a founder of a technology firm, I would have absolutely asked you what drugs you were taking, it, you know, just <laughs> insanely so. So just don't let it hold you back. Anything is possible and just go for it. Even if you're not really sure what you're doing, just do it and you'll figure it out. It's like, you know, being on a sailboat. You think you're going really slowly, but you look behind and you kind of go, God, I've actually come really far. So don't be worried about that too much. And how important has your team become now of people with that expertise around you? 
vital you know we're a technology company so you know when it when it comes to anything you know really technical now i have learned an awful lot about technology i can you know look through resumes and, and i know the difference between grails and groovy and, and different you know languages and everything but you know we've got an amazing uh, technology team so they do all that we you know when we're raising funding they do all the technology documents and due diligence they take all the calls on anything technical and um, but i can still go in i know enough now to be able to handle the initial conversations but absolutely you have to have the team around you and their fantastic team. Can I put this question kind of to Geraldine and Julia? Um, Geraldine, you're from Dropbox, which you know, you're not that long in Dublin, but if I'm right, is it about 50 50 men and women, I think? Yeah, it's probably about that. We, I don't actually count, but I would say it is about 50 50 men and women. Um, and, and really, we're not looking at you know, who we're going out to hire, if it's a, a male or a female, really. What we're looking for is where we have the biggest density of talent. Um, we do try and ensure for some of the more technical roles that at least we have a pipeline of women coming through so that we've taken as broad an approach as possible for the groups of people that we're hiring. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a, a female that gets that role because we've put them through the, the pipeline, but at least we've made sure that we're, we're going out to look for as broad a talent pool as possible. I'm um, reading this book, uh, actually, that's called Overwhelmed, and it's, it's uh, written by Bridget Schultz, I think is her last name. And it's one of the more profound books that I've read in a while. Um, it's not one of those ones that I, that I actually want to read the cliff notes on, you know, and get to the short version. I actually am just enveloping it because it talks all about, I'm not through it yet, but it talks all about how we work and what kind of work environment we've created, not just domestically in the US, but internationally, frankly. And save for a few very progressive countries who actually get it, We've created a work environment that's sort of laughably unbalanced, right? And so what I think that we've done at Eventbrite, or I know that we've done at Eventbrite uh, concertedly, is created a, an inclusive work environment. And I actually don't, I, I'll be completely candid, I don't know if we would have been that aware of it and so thoughtful about it if we hadn't had um, our children during the course of creating Eventbrite. So, you know, we had Emma in 2008, and I was in the hospital as the cus sole customer service representative of <laughs> Eventbrite, emailing my customers, and Kevin likes to laugh that they actually had to take the laptop away from me, and I said, well, no, actually, I just didn't know, I didn't want to know what came next in the process. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really wanted to put that one off. But, you know, for us, because we were midstream in our company, we were creating a company and, and growing this family at the same time, it's totally inane to us to not have an inclusive work environment that creates the ultimate flexibility and empowerment to not only mothers but also fathers. Because guess what? We oftentimes don't realize that we're not giving fathers the same amount of support that they need. And they just had a child too. Like obviously physically it's different. But that milestone and that transformation in your life is huge. So we apply it to, to not only that transform transformative time, but any milestone in someone's life, any special event, we actually have somebody who's focused just on special events in Breitling's lives. Like, that is her sole focus. And we're not that big of a team, so, but it's that important to us to be able to, whether it's somebody getting a visa and moving across the country, or having a child, or adopting a child, or going through grievance of family death, whatever it may be, we're there and we embrace the Breitlings. So I think that's part of the spirit that I'm starting to reckon companies should be adopting.